Hey, how you doing? Thanks for tuning in. You don't really tune in the garden form. Do you? I guess it's just automatically downloaded. Or if you're just here for the first time, you're like, okay, I'm going to try out the show with a weird title. Um, I thought I'd show, I thought I'd make the title of this show. Um, I thought of the title while I was meditating and, if, and then I forgot it, which is unusual while I'm meditating because usually the thoughts I get while I meditate about ideas, I actually remember. Uh, when I get ideas, otherwise I forget them, which is why I carry around this little spiral notebook um, that is just to the left of me that you can't see because the microphone doesn't have a camera in it. But welcome. Is this your first time? It could be. This is Garden Fork Radio, which is, um, it's me, Eric. I have a YouTube channel that is a mix of eclectic DIY and food and stuff. Um, generally, projects I think are interesting. And Garden Fork Radio is an extension of that. It's me talking to interesting friends of mine who um, none of them are here. It's Eric. It's the solo Eric show. Um, I'm trying to do more of these and trying to be better at it. And I think one of the best ways to get better at something is just keep doing it, right? Um, you know, you're like, oh, wow, why did he get so good at that? Well, he just kept on doing it, you know? Um Kind of like making videos. So I, I've been having a, I made up a list of stuff that I'd like to talk to you about. And of course, some stuff will pop into my head. So we should go, right? So first thing is an apology. I'm famous for apologies. Um, just ask my neighbors when I stick my foot in my mouth about something. Um, hold on, I got to look it up. Here it is. Okay, uh, Nicole. Nicole is a donor to Garden Fork, a supporter I don't think we can use the word donor because uh, we're not a nonprofit. I'm not, I have to check on that. Anyway, um, Nicole is, Nicole H will say, and she know who she is, is a supporter through PayPal. You can make a one-time, uh, one-time supporting thing. I'm mangling the words, as you know. But anyway, I forgot to include Nicole in listing the, uh, when I said the Patreon supporters, you can also support Garden Fork with a one-time uh, payment, and that's available through PayPal. Um, our ongoing donation program, which is kind of like NPR or PBS, it's a monthly uh, $3 or $5 or however much you want to give. Um, there's a couple of big ones out there, and they know who they are. Um, that's through Patreon. All those links are in the show notes. If you're listening to this on the iTunes app, if you just touch the Garden Fork logo which is probably a labrador uh just touch that image and up should come a bunch of show notes and um so a big thank you to nicole and the other cool thing is we have discovered through some research that you can leave a review from the podcast the apple podcast app i don't know about the rest of the one but um it's written by um, a very cryptic person abe froman 123 who I know who that is, um, and they know who that is. They know who they are. It's 6.30, and I'm mangling my words, so it's been a long day. I was up on a roof today. I was up on the B roof, and it's like 95 degrees. It's the last hot day of summer, I think, but I had to get up there because I won't be around for a couple days. But anyway, uh, a new iTunes review, which would be great if you could do that. Big hint, five stars really helps. Um and Abe says, the best way to start your Saturday. As always, a great show, the great cast of characters. Garden 4 is, well, I, I think he meant Garden Fork, but he's typing on a phone. Garden Fork is one of the best DIY podcasts out there. Note, Eric, this was posted by the Apple Podcast app. Just go to the bottom of the feed and the option is there to post. So, hmm, hmm, how about that? So thank you to Abe. If you want to write a review, um, it really does uh, make the wheels of algorithm work at the Apple Podcast site. You know, you know, I typed in DIY podcasts again the other day, and um, it is an underwhelming mix of stuff. There are some shows that are no longer updated. Um, there are some just plain weird ones. Uh, well, you know, Eric's weird, so... Um, yeah, so I don't know. You, if you type in Maker, there's a lot more shows, but they're kind of, it seems like a lot of them are very woodworking based. Um, and we, I guess we could talk about woodworking, but that's not, that's not our world. So there you go. Thank you, Abe. So just go to iTunes or use your app 
and yeah, listen to that. I've been uh, binging on a new podcast, and I'm. it's been very helpful to me. As you know, I'm big on meditation. It helps what I call the hamster wheel in my head that, um, you know, you just kind of get down in the weeds about something that happened, and it just kind of grinds on you. That actually happened to me last week where um, I did something and I thought, okay, that wasn't the smartest thing. And the, and the person on the receiving end was not real happy about it and then went on vacation. So I couldn't really uh, apologize to them. So I just ro- kind of rolled it around in my head for way too long. But the, the meditation really helps me stop with that. And then I just went to... Um, Every other week, I go with one of my closest friends for his chemotherapy, and then I went and did that, and I was like, why are you, uh, you know, why are you thinking about this little stuff, you know, um, when in the bigger picture, you can walk and talk, you have your health, yeah, you ruffled the feathers of somebody, but um, that's nothing compared to uh, chemotherapy, you know, so there you go. Anyway, that was off on a tangent, wasn't it, and Rick or Aaron is not here to bring me back to the world. But the uh, podcast I've been listening to, it has a really odd name. It's called The Hilarious World of Depression, which is you're like, huh? You know, and so um, I thought, okay, let's see what's going on here. And originally it was described as a uh, podcast for comedians to talk about their depression. And I'm like, that's already taken care of on the WTF podcast with Mark Marin. Um, he has a lot of comedians on and they always talk about their uh, world. And I what I'm what I like is that the show has moved on from its original treatise, original mantra or uh, mission statement. That's the word the phrase. And now they have all sorts of people. Uh, which is really cool. And the most recent one is um, a rapper, which I thought was really cool. But I'm going to read you um, the description of the show. It's it's called, uh, okay, so it starts. It goes, a show about clinical depression. With laughs? Well, yeah. Depression is an incredibly common and isolating disease experienced by millions, yet often stigmatized by society. The Hilarious World of Depression is a series of frank, moving, and yes, funny conversations with talk top comedians, which is no longer true. Um, So we'll say top people who have dealt with the disease. Hosted by veteran humorist and public radio host John Moe. Join guests such as Maria Bamford, Paul Tompkins, Andy Richter, and Jen Kirkman to learn how they've dealt with depression and managed to laugh along the way. If you've not met the disease personally, it's almost certain that someone you know has, whether it's a friend, family member, colleague, or neighbor. Depression is a vicious cycle of solitude and stigma that leaves people miserable and sometimes dead. Frankly, we're not going to put up with that anymore. The hilarious world of depression is not a medical treatment, and it should not be seen as a substitute for therapy and medication. But it is a chance to gain some insight, have a few laughs, and realize that people with depression are not alone, and that together we can all feel a bit better. And yeah, it's... um. A couple of the shows I I actually uh, have re-queued to listen to again. The most recent one I listened to, um, it it actually, there were, okay, I'm blanking because I can't find the name of the person here, but they interviewed the host to talk about um, how he lost his brother to depression and suicide. And that was, that was, um, that was kind of an eye opener, I thought. So um, there you go. There's a couple interesting people. Hannah Hart, who is a, a YouTube star that I like to watch, is on there. And um, there's an episode about how to get help. Um, they talk about Lady Gaga. Andrew Zimmern, who's uh, he has a food show. He kind of eats everything, I think. So I thought that was good. There you go. It's called The Hilarious World of Depression with John Moe. And um, I'll link to it in the show notes here, right? Okay. Do you shop on Amazon? I shop locally and also on Amazon and other online stores. If I need something very specific, like seat covers for the new used car we just bought, I will go online and sometimes use Amazon. 
And Garden Fork happens to have a dedicated shopping page on the Amazon site now, which is very cool. It is an affiliate linked page. We do get a finder's fee for anything that you buy when you start shopping from that page. But I list there interesting items that I think are worthy of the Garden Fork DIY person. It's amazon.com slash shop slash Garden Fork. If you would start your Amazon shopping experience, no matter what you're looking for on Amazon, start at Garden Fork and that would be great. It's amazon.com slash shop slash Garden Fork. That's amazon.com slash shop slash Garden Fork. Got a couple of emails, uh, one from Kevin or Casey as we call him. He said, this app will allow you to hear ambient noise while wearing headphones. Now you too can listen to podcasts while cycling in the city. Love the show. Kevin, he always closes it by saying love the show, which is great. So I've talked about people are like, oh, do you listen to podcasts while riding your bike in the city? And I'm like, no, because I need to hear what's going on. So it sounds like this app. Well, let's just click on the link here and see what it does. It will play ambient. Uh, okay. It's a variable noise isolation for all headphones. Mainstay ever. A must have for noise isolating and in ear monitoring. Oh, it says hear your music, hear the world, hear both, you choose. So, yeah, like while you're running, uh, if you hear like an ambulance siren, you can get out of the way. Uh, or, you know. So, there you go. It's called Awareness, the headphone app. And that was from Kevin. Thank you, sir. And then Mark. Mark G. Hey, Eric, I was listening to old episodes and heard you ask for a pizza recipe. This is from a co-worker, Greg Garcia. I'll put this in the show notes, but it's three and a half cups of flour, a teaspoon of garlic powder. Very interesting. One teaspoon of salt, one teaspoon of sugar. Sugar is key, I think. Two tablespoons of olive oil, another important ingredient. One cup plus two tablespoons of water, two and a half teaspoons of active dry yeast, which I think is one packet. Mix with a dough hook or by hand until it makes a ball and then knead on a floured surface for eight minutes. Place in a slightly warm area covered. Let rise one hour. Mix uh, six, eight to ten inch pizzas or two large. We use it for pizzas on the grill. And that's from Mark G. Cool, man. I actually have been cooking a lot outside on an induction burner. It's a, I bought it on Amazon. It was like 65 bucks. And you know, there are, uh, People have these fancy induction cooktops. There's a lot of restaurants, these um, kind of low budget on the fly pop-up restaurants. Also, they're used in uh, like for food fairs and stuff like that or farmer's markets. You can plug an induction burner into a 15 amp 110 volt circuit and you have a cooktop. It works with cast iron or metal pans. It will not work with aluminum pans. But yeah, I basically just walk outside i plug this thing in and i have a we have a little table right there and i cook food so instead of heating up my kitchen i um cook outside and i just walk it back inside and it's been a a pretty brilliant thing for me and i thought oh okay that works pretty good so i'll link to that in the show notes there let me just check if i have any more uh viewer mail i've got a viewer mail folder now i'm getting a little better um if I did not read your viewer mail and you sent me something, please let me know. Um, I will do a quick check here. By the way, the email address for all you commenters is radio at gardenfork.tv. All right, radio at gardenfork.tv. And it says from, no, I want to. You like how I do this? Um, no, that's it. I think that's it. If you If I haven't read your note please let me know okay radio at gardenfork.tv um i am a big fan of pbs and i'm a supporter of theirs you can um i think it's five bucks a month and then i use their app on the apple tv box and i um get to watch the whole back catalog of shows we've been watching the british baking show the past seasons of that um the search function isn't really great on it, but if you are wanting to watch a particular show or like old Nova episodes, you can click through there and watch them. You have to do a little digging sometimes, but 
I just watched this one show, which is a brand new one. It's called Ancient Invisible Cities. It's uh, three parts, and they go to Cairo, they go to Greece, and they, they go to Athens, Cairo, and Istanbul. And I saw the one on Athens, and I was like, all right, well, how many more times do we have to see about Athens, you know? But what these guys did is they used 3D scanning technology to reveal the hidden secrets of ancient Athens. And I was really... Uh, that was pretty amazing. They scanned, not the Acropolis, it is called, it's the thing next to the Acropolis. Do, 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 I don't have the name. It's called the Erythinian or the, something like this. Um, and I'm like, wow. So in addition to uh, talking about the structures above ground, and we got some history about how um, they were conquered, you know, bad things happened and how they thwarted people, you know, other people's. They use the 3D scanning technology in a ancient silver mine in Laurion, L-A-U-R-I-O-N. And the silver mines are really what um, kept Athens afloat. It really, it funded all this building. And man, I thought, okay, this is interesting. You know, kind of a mine I walk into. No, they have to crawl into it in these super claustrophobic tiny spaces Um and basically, they had enslaved peoples uh, mining for silver. And these guys, um, the host of the show and his crew of 3D scanning experts who would do this amazing VR work, which you can view, you can view the VR um, files on the PBS site. They mapped, they 3D mapped the interior of the silver mine with these passages that are maybe a foot and a half wide and six inches high or something. So to get that scanning gear in there is just phenomenal. But they followed a vein of silver through the hill. So it's not like you're just kind of chunking out a, a mine where you can stand up and do your work. No, they had these slaves in there with no electricity. You know, it's, um, you know, oil lamps which are put out an awful lot of smoke. So that was not a nice existence. Um, silver mining was back in the day was done by a lot of slave labor. Um, so that was pretty humbling. Um, and the also did the 3d scanning of an underground aqueduct, which was really cool. Um, and that was bigger it was an aqueduct big enough that you could stand up. But back when they made this thing, people were shorter. So um, the people that were there had to kind of crouch. But I thought that was kind of interesting. So it's called um, Ancient Invisible Cities, and that is on PBS. So uh, on Garden Fork, I just wallpapered a room and I made a video about it. And um, I hope to never... Um, I hope they never wallpaper again, basically. <laughs> I got some uh, some tips from people, and that was very helpful. And I'm thinking, uh, okay, let's not do this again, you know? In hindsight, I would have uh, painted the wall the same color as the background color in the wallpaper. Because uh, after the wallpaper dried, the seams pulled a little bit to reveal what was a white wall behind it. And it was a very dark background. So you can see these tiny white lines in a couple of places. Um, so I wouldn't do that again. And um, my wallpaper expert friend said, I didn't let the paper soak enough with the adhesive. And I thought I did, um, but obviously I didn't. So there you go. A little thing to think about there. Um, some other thing popped into my head and something just popped right back out again. <laughs> anyway, that uh, coming up, we have, um, we're going to be making a video about recovering, restoring my blueberry patch from it's now just a giant mess of weeds. And that's going to be sponsored by Troy Belt. They're sending me a new piece of uh, outdoor power equipment that we're going to use. And I think that'll be a lot of fun. Troy Belt is a uh, recurring sponsor of Garden Fork. They compensate me for my time and they send me equipment, but uh, I think they're a good company and they help pay the bills there. They keep the uh, keep the place rolling, you know? 
So there you go. Um, just Eric, Eric's world. If you have any thoughts, I love to hear from you. It's radio at gardenfork.tv. Will Wallace of The Weekend Hempstead has some new videos up on his YouTube channel. Just type in The Weekend Homestead on YouTube. He does a 20 minute update of what they've been working on at the uh, up at his place. And man, it's a lot of stuff. He's exhausting, so <laughs> yikes. And a big thank you to Nicole H for her. Uh, I keep getting emails from her. We keep talking, it's very cool. It's always great to hear from you guys. It's radio at gardenfork.tv. All right, so go out and do tools, do cool stuff and make it a great day. I'll see you. Garden Fork Radio's executive producer is Jimmy Goots of hollowbooks.com and our music is licensed from uniquetracks.com. Thank you.